Um, yes, debugging is extremely exciting, except when uh, you have a bug in production, uh, which finds this less exciting. Um, first, a show of hands, uh, who here uh, knows about debuggers? Okay, we got a couple of people. Who uses debuggers? Um, who here would raise their hand if I asked a question that they wouldn't know the answer to? About the same people. So <laughs> either everyone knows about debuggers or no one likes to raise their hands when questions are asked. Um, so I'm going to start with um, what the goal of this talk is, because uh, I think it, I need to be clear here. I'm going to try to teach you what a debugger is, why debuggers are amazing, and try to give you a sense that you should really go back home and be excited to play with a debugger. Uh, but I won't try to teach you everything there is to know about a debugger, and you shouldn't expect to be like, wow, I know how debuggers work right now, and I'm going to go and debug code right away. Um, you should just know that debuggers are amazing, and that when you get back home, you try starting to use a debugger, and everything is going to be peachy from there. So what is a debugger? Um, so a debugger allows you to step inside the matrix, just like Neo at the end of uh, the first matrix. Uh, I like to pretend that matrix two and three never existed. Um, so it, when you go and step inside code, you get to actually see the content of variables, and you get to actually modify the content of variables um, on a line per line basis. You get to view the code as it's running during runtime. You get to see the call stack. So you get to see what functions led you to this particular line of code. Um, you get to interact with the script that's running. So you can run an arbitrary line of code, or you get to run, uh, assign various uh, values to variable. You get to do basically anything you could do from the PHP command line. And uh, there's various debuggers, and they're available for various languages. And I'm only going to be talking about uh, PHP debuggers in this talk. And I'm going to be focusing on xDebug. But there are other debuggers for PHP, and uh, there are other debuggers for JavaScript. Uh, most of the debuggers for JavaScript usually are the ones that are inside the browsers, uh, such as for Chrome and Firefox and, uh, God help you, Internet Explorer. So um, I'm going to step. I'm going to be talking about xDebug, but I'm not going to show you how to install it. All you need to know is that there's a great tutorial, um, and if you're using VVV, I think it's already installed. Um, all you need to know is you can just go there. You just need to add one line, add the extension, and poof, you're done. Also. In your IDE, it's also very simple. It's already built into most IDEs, PHP Storm, Eclipse, NetBeans, uh, PHP Z, Zen Studio, all the major IDEs, depending on uh, which debugger you're using, there's going to be an IDE that works with it. So uh, I'm going to make one of the uh, sins of presentations, and I'm going to try to show you how to debug live. Um, according to my one of my best uh, favorite persons, Bill O'Reilly here. So we're going to step through a couple of bugs, um, and we're going to we're going to see what happens um, when we debug them. So you're going to have to listen and uh, uh, accept the fact that I'm telling you that these are bugs, and then we'll step through the code and see what happens. So here is uh, one of my pages that I'm. Uh, looking at in my code. And you see this is the regular Hello World post. And as you can see here, there's no, uh, the content is gone. Um, and I don't know why right now. And uh, we'll see why as we step through the code as I debug. So I have a little extension here to enable debugging. And all it does is just send a get parameter to the server. So all you have to do is to enable that and then you go, and then PHP Storm will light up. And it's going to tell me that I'm a, it's ready to debug. And you can see here all the call stack of how I got to this line. So it tells me, OK, you started here in this file at index 17, and then you went here, and then you went here, and then you went here. And now you're inside single.php at line 10. And I can see all the variables that are set 
at this point in time, which are here. And this includes all the variables in global scope and all the variables inside. I can go look at the posts array. I can go look at the post per page. I can go look at everything. And I can modify any of these as I wish. And arrays, you can expand them and see anything. So I'm going to go and just press play, which is a resume program. And it goes to uh, the next breakpoint that I've set. So uh, knowing that uh, it's where the content is that this is uh, stopping, I put a breakpoint inside um, the content. So here is where the content uh, happens inside uh, 2014, which is the theme that I'm running. So I can do a bunch of things here. And now I see, I'm going to go and step inside um, uh, this function. So here. And so uh, step inside, then it goes inside some of the functions that are, are happening. So I can see here all of the variables that are being passed uh, to the function underscore underscore which if you go here to the content, you'll see that underscore underscore is what is being passed to the, th the content. And you can see the domain and et cetera. And if I wanted to, I can right click here and I can set a new value to be able to test. And all this is going to be reflected on the side and on the page as I go. And again, I can also change any of the globals, any of the server, the request, the get, or the cookie variables. So here we go. We have the content. And it's going to go do and get the content. And I can see here that this is what is set from get the content. And so at this point in the code, I know that the content is set from the database. So everything is working from the database. I can click on view here. And I can see that all the content is here. And if I wanted to, I could change it by pressing edit. Like such. Okay. Now, um, you, you'll see here in line, um, a, it's a bit hard to tell, but with uh, PHP Storm, you can see the value of the variables that are being used on that line in line. So I don't even need to go in here. I can see in line the value of the variables being used. So it's extremely useful. So I'll go like this. And then there's this funny function in my functions.php that is being used here. Um, and it's a filter that, lo and behold, I added. and uh, it's called replace word camp with loofconf. So, <laughs> so, for example, let's say that I was, <laughs> that I took this presentation from one that I made at WordCamp, and I wanted to replace all the instances of WordCamp in the content that I was doing and replace it by loofconf. Now, here I look and I scan through the content. And if I find an instance of WordCamp and it's not equal false, I'll replace it with loopcomp. So, okay, that sounds very logical. Okay, and you can see here the, val the value of the content. Okay, and so I'll go like, okay, this, this looks great. I'm going to step over and I'm going to go and step into. And now we'll see that we're inside um, the apply filter. And so I'm applying the filter uh, for the content. And you can see I can hover over variables, and it's going to tell me the value of variables. So I'm in the filter for the content. Now, if we look here, and I go and see at what the value is, the value being what is going to be returned uh, to, uh, to my filter, um, it currently doesn't work. And that's because it's null. And so if, you, if we go back here and we start to look at my code, you'll see that I actually didn't return um, the content if there was no instance of WordCamp. 
So as we can see, I can see that, oh, at this point in the code is where I stopped returning the content and the, current, the content was um, uh, blank. So if I wanted to, I could just keep debugging and pressing play, or I can stop and just be like, oh, this is where my bug is. And lo and behold, I have code that is commented out just below so that I don't even need to try to code on the fly. And if we were to refresh this page, now we have the content. So using a debugger, we were able to find where in the code um, the content was being modified and was not being returned correctly. So we'll go through another bug. And so, for example, here, um, I'm on the category archive pages. And let's say I want to go on another category archive page. And uh, I made a, a little feature before coming here so that if you go on the home page of uh, my site, it's only going to show you pages for Las Vegas uh, or that are in the category Las Vegas. Uh, because I'm being clever and I'm using a geolocation plugin and I'm making sure that if you're in Las Vegas, you only see the pages for Las Vegas. But there's a small little problem, and it, that is that when you go to the Calgary uh, category, for example, it actually just shows you all the Las Vegas pages as well. And if I want to go in Montreal, it also it doesn't show you anything. If you want to go in other places, it shows you the Las Vegas categories. So there's obviously something I'm uh, deeply broken here. So if, let's say, we were to uh, go and debug and uh, set the debugger to listen, and we click on the Calgary page, oh, now I bet you things are not going to work. Oh, no, here it is. Okay. We're going to, there you go. So now we're at the head of the category page here. And we can go, and I'm going to make sure this is going to, we can go and skip ahead to uh, the code that is going to break here in uh, my functions.php. So, Uh, this is, again, the same, the content, where I put a breakpoint. So another thing that we can do is put conditional breakpoints. And and that didn't work, and this is why people should never do live code demos. Let me try that again. Okay, there we go. So um, the code here is stopped at this, uh, if uh, Las Vegas equals uh, GeoCity. Uh, and uh, currently we're in the city of Las Vegas. But the problem is that we're inside a category page. Um, so we shouldn't actually be running this code on a category page. It's just running all the time on pre-get posts, um, which is a bit uh, overzealous on my part. But what we can see here is that I can also see the value of the query, which is being run here. And we can see all the query vars. So this is extremely useful when you're coding and you're wondering, well, which, what, am I, what should I be looking in? What value am I looking for? Is it category in? Is it category underscore in? Is it tag in? All of these things, you can view them inside while debugging. So you don't need to do a print var or a print dump or uh, a var dump, sorry. And so you can run this on uh, 
something that is client facing, not necessarily production, but a staging server, et cetera, without the client having to see all your VART dumps and all that stuff. Um, another extremely great feature, and so here, let's say, we, we'll see that um, this, you, we shouldn't be running this while uh, on a category page. And so we'll go in our functions.php and we would comment this out and we would make sure that we only run our code if it's the front page and it's the main query, like this. And these are things that we can do. Um, other incredibly useful things that we can do with debuggers is that we can do conditional breakpoints. So if, let's say, we're inside of a uh, apply filter, and we only want to stop at a certain filter, so only when the content is being run. If we were to put a breakpoint during uh, uh, apply filter, it's going to stop on every filter hook, which, as you probably know, there are many, many of them. So something that's very useful is that you should only do uh, apply a filter uh, when a tag is of a certain value. So here, for example, I can do, uh, do tag equal equal the content. And then it's only going to run this filter when uh, the filter tag is equal to the content. So this means that you can set breakpoints at any point in the code when only certain conditions are met. You can also enable and disable breakpoints. You can also mark certain variables as watches. So sometimes you don't want all of the variables to be watched. So let's say we were to restart this again. And we don't want all the variables to be watched. We can add a variable, a specific figure variable here. And we can only need to watch this specific variable. This is very useful when you're in the global scope, for example, which we're often in the global scope when we're using WordPress, and there are too many variables to keep track of. So as I mentioned, I hope that you can see how useful um, uh, uh, debuggers are, and I will love to help you set up your own debugger, use debuggers, and Come and ask me any questions you have about debuggers, and come tweet at me if you have any questions about debuggers. Uh, also, as a side note, Automatic is always hiring, and you should feel free to apply. <laughs> Thank you very much.